people are still going on about this whole Cat Williams situation, man. People are still going on about it. <laughs> he sent shockwaves reverberating around the whole entertainment industry. And people are still talking about it. I never really had an issue with, like, what anything he said, pretty much. Well, the only thing I had an issue with was him talking about Ricky Smiley's uh, losing a kid and then kind of insinuating that was, like, a sacrifice or something. I felt that was too far. Like, bro, one, slow down, man. I was with you until now, you know. But the fact that there was stealing his jokes and all that stuff, I can understand if he's bitter about that and wants some get back because they've been... Going around insinuating he was crazy. So you're not going to sit back and let someone call you crazy without you saying something. So let's see what bro uh, Corey is going to say about this. So I'll let the video play a little and then I'll chime in from time to time. Let's see. Cat Williams is necessary. Cat Williams is necessary. This motherfucker that shook up the whole shit. I know this shit need to be... Torn apart and rebuilt. I'm talking about the comedy, the comedy game, the shit that people don't know. Yeah, yeah but he re, he shook this motherfucker up. He necessary, and I know it's some people gonna be mad at me for saying that. But also, my nigga Cat Williams is crazy to the motherfucker. <laughs> this is the Joker off the Batman, the Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat Williams is the Joker, nigga. Yeah. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> you can call him brilliant. I, I I know that he's got brilliance to him. But oh, he's yeah. also got Oh yeah, he's brilliant. He's one of those people where you don't know what you get with him. You might get him in his good day and you might get him in his not so good day. <laughs> he's just one of those people. But one thing you can't take away from him, he's funny. He's a very funny person, really talented. Shit to him, you be like, sure. what the fuck? Exactly. <laughs> The interview, the interview of all interviews no, was necessary. <laughs> but let me tell you something. It was some good in there. Some people got exposed. Some people got exposed. But it was some cap in there too. That's the shit that's gonna make everybody mad at me. Cause I don't give a fuck who mad at me anyway. Cause I, I ain't gonna do nothing to tell the truth. If the truth make you mad, then you hate God. If the truth make you mad, you hate God. It was it was a lot of it was some truth in that interview and it was some cat in the motherfucking interview. <laughs> it's two cat Williams. Trust me. I hope my nigga don't be mad at me for saying this. It's two cat Williams. It's cat Williams who's this brilliant mastermind motherfucker who got to come back for anything. And it's this other nigga. <laughs> now this other nigga. And it's plenty of people who bear witness to this. I don't even understand this motherfucker. In fact, he's scary. Fact. When I say it's two niggas, listen what I'm saying. When you hear them stories about Cat's generosity, they not lying. Top notch. Cat pass niggas money to the point where you be like, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. All right. So listen to me, man. Listen to me, man. It's two Cat Williams. All you blogger motherfuckers, y'all ain't got no fucking clue. It's two niggas. It's calm, generous, intelligent, Cat, and it is the Joker on Fat Man, nigga. I done seen the nigga standing on two cards with two big ass 45s in his hand in front of the comedy store. Yeah, he got mad at uh, Thomas Ward. Thomas Ward was like, yo, nigga, you look like Sibity Sam up there. <laughs> 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 I ain't more than that, nigga. Uh -huh. I, man, I didn't see him. Can't do shit. Well, I mean, like, what the fuck? Is he all right? <laughs> My nigga, I'm just saying. So all the comics that got problems with Kent, I understand why you got problems with Kent. But some of y'all motherfuckers got to admit the problem you have with Kent is he uprooting the bullshit foundation you was built on. I was hanging with Kevin Hart when he was driving a ragged ass Jeep out here in California. I was with Kevin Hart when him and Tori was um, a new couple out here in LA, nigga. So, you know, he said the brother of plant. Yeah. All I'm saying, before that nigga got some money, I was, shit, I, man, I picked Kevin Hart up, took him to the airport one day. Yeah. That type of shit, I'm saying, now this motherfucker, Gerard Carmichael, that's a plant. <laughs> Have you ever seen
bringing this nigga up, bringing in comedy. <laughs> His, this nigga had a TV show. His ascension was crazy. Hosting motherfucking award show and all of it suck. I'm just saying, I ain't saying the TV show suck because I never okay, watched it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, stand up. This nigga shot a stand up special at the comedy store and made it to TV. Well, no, hmm. Spike Lee directed Girl. the stand up special. Well, that's why. Ninety percent of comedians steal jokes. True. I don't know if I say ninety percent, but a good portion. Even the music as well. People steal people's lyrics all the time. People steal full songs. You know how many songs Drake have jacked from people? Remember Triple X Tentacion had issues with Drake because when he was locked up, Drake stole his stuff and was really angry when he came out going after Drake and attacking Drake verbally. Guess what? People called him crazy because people are always going to side with the one with the most money and fame and power. Imagine if Beyonce stole your song. You're a nobody. Who's going to listen to you? And Beyonce have jacked people's songs a lot as well. So people still, it's not, not, it's not good. It's a difference between you trying to copy uh, someone's way of doing things and try to refine it to make it better. It's a big difference from that and you just jacking someone's whole craft. Come on, man. Cat stole JV Smooth joke and did it on his special. It's the joke with the music. Cat stole JV Smooth joke and did it on his special. It's the joke with the music. You can do this to this song. And I damn motherfucker, I'm from motherfucking an era of comedy where it's too many comics know that I, what I'm saying is straight. Almost all the comics stole jokes. I done stole a joke before when I was a younger comic, though. I ain't making excuses for myself, right. but this is the truth. I stole a nigga from Columbus, Ohio joke. The nigga name was Stephen G. Stephen G. Oh, he giving it up to Stephen G. Because I'm a G now. That's I ain't, right, I ain't, you are. I, man, look, Stephen G. That joke you used to do, do about, uh, Mama Big Man don't cry. You know, whatever happened, that's what he'd be like, Mama, Mama Big Man don't cry, not Mama Big Man. Then the nigga don't cry and shit. And you know what I'm saying? Wait, he switched it up. So you're talking I about, can't do it like him. You're talking about I, people basically borrow, and they kind of like- No, it's not borrow. I stole his joke. <laughs> I snuck his joke. I did it about, look, I swear. I, yeah, I did it about five oh, wow. times. But this was before I was getting, I was even known okay. as a comedian. Okay. I did, and he know this, because the, the, well, look, the timeline go ahead up. I got stuck one day, and I remember his joke, and I did it. Stephen G, and, and, and look, I did your joke, that same joke. One day I did the joke, and somebody hired me to do a party in their house. And I, I, I was stuck, and then I ran to his joke. And they paid me $500, so Stephen G, get up with me, homie. I'm going to give you 500 plus interest. Hell yeah, that's dope. Just on the G, because but look, I swear this is the truth. I took a nigga joke before. I was I was young in comedy. I thought I was slick. That's commendable. At least he's being honest. But I wouldn't have thought Corey Holcomb stole a joke because he's very funny. I don't steal jokes nowadays because I'm my own man now. Mm -hmm. Shit I did when I was younger, I don't do that shit no As more. I, I stand on it. That's what I was going to get like. We can't have a motherfucker just telling on everybody if you ain't finna stand on who you are. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say about somebody, Whatever you say about somebody, Ricky Smiley, the first comic, took me on the road. Most comics won't take me on the road because I was funnier than them. Did you guys see that when Ricky Smiley was going to come out and address the whole situation? And he, he turned his camera on. It was on social media. I think I saw it on Facebook or something or on Instagram or something. And then he just couldn't even speak. He just burst out crying. Like, re, like crying. Like, seriously crying. Like, yo, this man is in pain. Can someone check on this guy? Because he just lost a kid. So he's, he's in pain, man. Y'all take it easy on them. What? Ain't no motherfucking lie. No cap to this. That's when I found out about J.B. Smooth. When Ricky Smiley took me on the road. I didn't know who the fuck J.B. Smooth was. I was like, who is this motherfucker? It's a lot of comics Oh, J.B. Smooth money. Y'all y'all new motherfuckers, y'all don't know about J.B. Smooth. When you see niggas doing this on stage, when they hit the mic, like somebody hitting them or whatever, mm -hmm. that's J.B. Smooth. Wow, really? A lot of these niggas branched off and took J.B. Smooth jokes because J.B. Smooth be with Larry David them, the, the, the white boy. Real money he, ain't in the, he ain't in the urban underground like he used to be. So a lot of these buster ass comics, whoever you see hit the mic like somebody hit them, that's J.B. Smooth joke. I dare you to lie and say it ain't because it's a whole nation. Is it his joke or his original gesture? Maybe he was the one that started doing that gesture in stand-up. Because hitting the mic is not really a joke. What's the context behind the action? So I guess what he's saying, because even Kevin Hart has said he took that um, all right, all right, all right uh, joke from J.B. Smooth. <laughs> J.B. Smooth is talented, man. 
the comics and know I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that nigga. Whoever you seen do that. Hey, they stole that from JB Smooth. Yeah, all day long. Oh my man, listen, man. I don't know if this is true or not. Bernie, one of the greatest comics I ever motherfucker seen. When he took a liking to me, it was like validation in the comedy game. Yeah. This could be a lie. Them motherfuckers told me that a white boy used to be like going on stage talking about, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. But them Florida comics told me that. A nigga from Florida. Who is a joke thing? Right. Almost all the comics from motherfucking Florida. Miami is joke thing. Oh, so you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, I ain't man. Almost all them niggas is joke jackers, dog. Wow. It's just they used to have rooms down there in Miami. You go down there. You got to perform in front of them. You know they running with your shit when you leave. Yeah. I'll put all the joke thieves I know. It was a nigga had a club in, in Columbus, Ohio named Andrew Ford. Uh -oh. He used to record your set and then do your set a couple of weeks later. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know the main reason why Corey Hopper ain't no mega motherfucking star? Because black Hollywood don't want me to see their boyfriend. <laughs> It ain't the industry. The industry will allow Corey Holcomb if I shut the fuck up and put my head down and be on TV like this. Cock it over there. Cock it over there. I got look close. And put my head down and be on TV like this. Cock it over there. If I do that, they'll let me in. Black Hollywood is scared of Corey Holcomb. Cause all these niggas in black Hollywood on the back Doria side of the game. Oh. And they don't want me to see their boyfriends. And I think that's discrimination. <laughs> dick in them nation. Dick in them nation. <laughs> Their dick in them nation don't want me to be around that. Hey, if you really gonna be the shepherd of men, we gonna step back and respect you cause you polarizing my nigga. Niggas love Cat Williams. He a right. little nigga. Mm -hmm. All them little niggas, people like him. Right. You can't be hypocritical. You can't be. You can't be ugly and be a leader. <laughs> Listen, you can stand up and be something that people really motherfucker be like. Okay, but see, you also gotta remember us niggas in the comedy streets. We know what's up. I'm rooting on you, black. Stand up and tell the shit you did, nigga. You done done some shit out here, nigga. <laughs> You got to put it out there because all that shit about being a humanitarian in Haiti and all that shit, that's good. No, but that was his family, his parents. That's why he lived. Well, that's he was what young. I'm saying. He it's was like, really young. When you're young, we talking about who it is nowadays and when you're young. Nigga, everybody ain't young. When I was young, I pulled my dick out on a bitch. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm saying I made mistakes. We all, you can't say all the good shit about what the fuck it is. Nigga, it's fucked up shit with everybody. All us fucked up. We entertainers. We are mentally fucked. But I like the fact that you uprooting them niggas. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about no nigga in particular. You really uprooting the game. Keep Entire. on uprooting the game with these motherfuckers standing mm -hmm. on fake foundation. It's necessary. I like that. It's necessary. You know what I'm saying? But my nigga, come on, Ken. You know you're a wild boy, my nigga. Come on, my nigga. Come on, my nigga. Because the fact that he can be a loose cannon every once in a while doesn't mean he doesn't speak the truth. There's one thing about people that have like very loud personality. When they actually, when they're serious about something, people don't necessarily take them seriously. They think they're just being gimmicky or just being the usual crazy self. I got respect for you as a comedian and everything, but nigga, you telling on motherfuckers and acting like you, nigga, let me tell you something, man. I don't give a fuck who get mad. All my niggas, who ain't got no teeth, got a story about what happened to their teeth that don't add up. But they got this. What are you talking about? One minute is making sense. The next minute he just goes left. He's like, yo, bro, come on, man. What are you saying? Same behavior. Right. Erratic, crazy shit. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, if y'all get the fuck out of here, nigga, I'm in the motherfucking streets with you, nigga. Stop! Mm, right. You gotta talk about yourself. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, how can you talk about the dust in another man's eye but ignore the plank in your own eyes? Well put. So you, you can't always look out the window. Sometimes you gotta look in the mirror. Well put. There you, go. you know what I'm saying? So I'm saying like, I, I also wanna say to a brother as intelligent as Cat is, cause I know the intelligence of Cat. Listen man, 
That time, with that bogus ass motherfucking situation in Atlanta, after you roasted old girl on the radio and you didn't do nothing but roast her. Is it Wendy or Wanda or something? She started the whole thing, started jabbing at him, and then he just roasted the life out of her, man. And I think they kind of like ambushed him one time, one night when he went on the show. Uh, we went for on a for a show one time at a club, and she was there at the same show. And I think her is it her brother or her husband or son or something ended up attacking Cat Williams with a firearm. I think I think that's what happened. Like, like we, we do, do. and not, she instigated it. That's all. Just gonna say. Look at the again. tape. She instigated it. Yep. That lady husband, and I think her son was there too. Yep. Oh, it's the husband. Ran up on y'all with them guns. I want you to know this, my brother. Very dangerous thing. You don't run on people with a gun because there's guns everywhere in the country, man. Someone might be someone might be concealing a bigger weapon. You bring yours out, that might be your last day on earth. People have to be rational thinkers, man. The husband was so emotional. If your wife is a comedian and she's getting roasted by a superior comedian, chuck it to the game, man. Just charge it to the game. It is what it is. You came for the guy and you got roasted. The husband, a very emotional, irrational little man child, went and attacked Cat Williams with a firearm. Unbelievable. I saw the video. It's crazy. Notice this, my brother. And his bodyguard didn't even do nothing. He was just standing there like an idiot. I'm like, why are you paying so much money for this bodyguard if you can't do nothing? He's just standing there watching someone chase Cat Williams with a, with a weapon. And Cat Williams' bodyguard is just there like, like Booba the Fool. Just like what? Guys, useless. Is this my brother? That big ass nigga you had walking with you when he stood behind the nigga with the gun. Exactly. Idiot. Watch the video. Your bodyguard, Cat, stood behind the nigga with the gun. I'm making a point with this. Brother, as intelligent as you are, you got to make sure you watch who with you, brother. You got to make sure the niggas with you. Especially when you've kicked the hornet's nest like this. People might be gunning for you one way or another. You need to keep, <laughs> keep some tough ex-military people with you, man. You've got the money, you can afford it. Don't take Tyrone off the streets because he's your cousin. Take people that actually qualified for this. You got to make sure the niggas with you is solid or they ain't worth shit. You t Listen, I understand you got problems with Kevin Hart. I understand you got problems with Kevin Hart. But trust me when I tell you, if that, if Wanda Husband would have umped that thing on Kevin Hart, the niggas with Kevin Hart would have ended that nigga. Because they not playing True. They, they, they went with Kevin for real. Oh, yes. And the point I'm trying to... Those plastic cup boys, they're not playing with, with Kevin Hart, man, because he's the breadwinner, man. He is the bag. They You have to protect the bag at all costs. Make is, my brother Cat, you got to watch who you fucking with, nigga. You can't fuck with some timey niggas. You got to motherfucking fuck with niggas that fuck with you for real because you are polarizing, you a star, and motherfuckers run up on you. You don't ever need the nigga with you to run behind the nigga that's pulling the gun on you. Mm -hmm. Well, you better hire a professional company before you hire a nigga on the streets. <laughs> exactly. That's what I say. I, I, I'm saying. If I you just didn't said grow that. Up with that nigga, mm. man, that nigga ain't finna hold you down when the shit really jump off. He just gonna collect checks. 